come to the needed news. I am Coyote Adebayo. At least 414,000 people have been displaced and another 30 killed by the devastating flood in Meduguri, the Bonu state capital. According to the National Emergency Management Agency, the flood began after the allowed dam overflowed following heavy rains leading to the town's worst flooding in 30 years. Nema spokesman Manso Ezekiel told newsmen that the death toll had hit 30 and displaced persons close to half a million, while more than 23,000 households have been hit by the rapid rise of waters. Reports indicate that water had receded as of yesterday after 70% of Meduguri was submerged by the fast moving waters, which ravaged major city locations, including the palace of Sheo of Bono, Umar Ibn Kara El Kanemi. Other places affected were the state secretariat, post office, cemetery, and the University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital. The flood also washed away 80% of animals at the Sandra Yarimi Park Zoo and damaged houses, schools, and where, as well as commercial and worship centers. Meanwhile, President Paul Atinobo has expressed concerns over the flooding and taxed relevant government agencies to expedite rescue efforts, while Vice President Kashim Shetima has visited the Bono state capital to conduct an on assessment of the devastating floods. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinobu has approved 108 billion naira for the states to combat natural disasters which each, with each state entitled to 3 billion naira. Report says the gesture is coming on the heels of the massive flooding ravaging states in the north. According to report, many southern states are at risk and besides flooding, erosion is rampant across the country, especially in the southeast, while Kaduna is also currently battling with erosion. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency has also predicted more rainfall and likelihood of more flooding as the year rolls to an end. Confirming the approval of Mr. President for the Disaster Management Fund, Shetima, who hosted the speaker, that, who hosted the speaker, the speaker Tajiri Nabas at the presidential villa Abuja said, the president has shown his zeal, willingness, and commitment to partner with states towards addressing the problem. Meanwhile, Bono State Governor Babangana Zulu, whose capital city is really under the flooding has, that followed the collapse of Alau Dam water channels, has confirmed he had received three billion naira from the federal government to battle the humanitarian crisis. In the meantime, the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Mr. Ola Olukoyedi has said that the Commission will continue to monitor bank transactions to curb financial flows to criminals, including bandits and terrorists. Mr. Olukoyedi made the remarks at the 2024 annual civil military conference organized by the Civil Military Cooperation at the National Defense College, Abuja. Mr. Olukoyedi, who was represented by the Director of Public Affairs Directorate, Wilson Wajeren, highlighted the connection between corruption and insecurity noting that corruption fosters poverty, which in turn makes unemployed citizens vulnerable to recruitment into banditry, kidnapping, and terrorism. Oluko Ede vowed that the EFCC will intensify efforts to monitor the flow of funds, particularly in banking transactions to prevent money from reaching bandits and terrorists. He noted that corruption is a key issue when it comes to the promotion of insecurity in the nation, adding that financial monitoring will help reduce the financial incentives driving criminal activities. The International Monetary Fund has tasked the federal government to prioritize building and accelerating a social safety net that protects vulnerable citizens. The resident representative of the IMF in Nigeria, Dr. Krista Ibeke, who made the charges in an interview with newsmen, hinted that petrol is still selling below market price, indicating the possibility of a further upward price movement. Dr. Ibeke, who was reacting to the ongoing pricing and supply crisis in the downstream sector of Nigerian oil industry, expressed worry that Nigerians are going through significant hardship due to policies being implemented by the federal government. He also expressed the view that the controversy surrounding the earlier claims that NMPCL would be the sole distributor of Dangote refinery petroleum products was better resolved in favor of consumers if availability and competition were in place. The National Senior Secondary Education Commission has revealed that a total of 50 selected senior secondary schools will undergo infrastructural upgrade nationwide. 
as part of its mandate as an intervention agency. The Executive Secretary of the Commission, Dr. Iyela Ajayi, made this known during the groundbreaking ceremony at the one of the 50 selected secondary schools in Kogi State. He noted that assessment had been conducted across the various selected schools following the rehabilitation mandate given by President Bola Tinobu. Dr. Iyela added that the upgrade of the 50 schools in the first phase will cost 47.5 billion naira. It will be recalled that the National Senior Secondary Education Commission was established in 2021 under the administration of the former President Muhammadu Buhari with its mandate covering senior secondary schools across the country. The Independent National Electoral Commission has said that sensitive materials for the September 21st Edo governorship election will arrive in the state next week. The chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, who disclosed this at the pre-election stakeholders meeting in Benin City, Edo State Capital said, the sensitive materials will be warehoused in the Central Bank of Nigeria. He reassured the stakeholders that INEC was ready for the election, noting that the commission was de deploying the bimodal voter accreditation system machines for voter accreditation at polling units and for uploading results to the INEC result viewing portal. According to him, high active preparations for the election started last year with releasing the timetable and schedule of activities for the election as required by law. He stated that the Commission has implemented 11 out of 13 activities on schedule with two outstanding, with two outstanding activities while the Commission has published the final list of candidates. While stating that INEC has complied with the court order relating to the election, he said 184,438 permanent voters' cards were delivered to Edo State following the conclusion of the recent continuous voter registration and the cleaning up of the data. Now to sports. Nigeria's Falconet will look to secure a place in the quarterfinals of the 2024 FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup when they take on Japan at the Estadio El Tecno in Bogota. The round of 16 encounter will kick off at 8 p.m. local time and 2 a.m. Nigerian time tomorrow. The Falconets finished second in Group D, behind former champions, Germany. Chris Danjima's side recorded two wins and one draw from their three group games. The West Africans have failed to progress beyond the quarterfinal stage since the 20, 20, 2014 edition. Japan were one of five teams to win all three of their group outings, while the young Nadeshiku are targeting their first title since 2018. Now, on the foreign scene, the United Nations Security Council has adopted a draft resolution that extends the sanction on Sudan until September next year. Renewing the sanction measures will restrict the movement of arms into Darfur and sanction individual and entities contributing to or in complicit in destabilizing activities of Sudan. All of this is critical to end escalating the conflict, alleviate humanitarian catastrophe, and put Sudan back on the path to stability and security. U.S. Representative for Special Political Affairs in the United Nations, Robert A. Wood, said, the United States remains committed to the Sudanese people and will continue to work closely with Sudan. The United Nations Security Council unanimously adopted the draft resolution extending the Sudan sanctions regime, including targeted sanctions such as asset freezes, travel bans, and an arms embargo as a technical rollover of measures previously renewed by the resolution 2676 in March last year. The sanction was adopted amid disagreement between Sudan's representative, Al Harith Mohammed, who blamed the war in Sudan on the support of United Arab Emirates for militias the claim which the UAE representative, Mohamed Abu Shahab, described as baseless. South Korea and Japan say North Korea has fired multiple short-range ballistic missiles off its east coast. The launches took place days after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un promised to put his nuclear force fully ready for battle with its rivals. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said 
It detected the missiles launched from North Korea's capital, Pyongyang, flying 360 kilometers be before landing in the waters between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. They condemned North Korea's missile launch, which they described as a clear provocation that seriously threatens peace and stability in the Korean Peninsula. However, South Korea did not elaborate on the number of missiles, but Japan's Ministry of Defense said at least two ballistic missiles were fired. Although there were no reports of damage, but Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida instructed officials to ensure the safety of ships and aircraft. The nuclear envoys of South Korea, Japan, and United States called the launch a violation of United Nations resolutions. And that ends the midday news on OSBC TV. The bulletin was edited by Adebari Ejimakinde. Please join us at 3 for the state news. Good afternoon.